Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Eric J Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about all things discus, tips from beginner to advanced, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson, and in today's video, we are going to be setting up for a four-part training series on how to throw the discus step-by-step. -step. So it's gonna be really important to understand our core terminology in learning and throw. So if this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, check out the long list of videos that we've designed for coaches and throwers to help you understand and learn a little bit more about the throwing chain reaction system, our six pillar system for being able to see, understand, and learn the throw for fast improvement and big throws. Let's check out the terminology. First thing that we like to talk about is we're gonna be communicating direction. 12 o'clock is the beginning of the throw. Six o'clock is directly the dead center of the sector. Therefore, this is three o'clock and this is nine o'clock. So the clock is gonna be real simple. So when you hear me refer to 12, six, nine, three, eight, whatever, that's the clock we're referring to. Simply separation refers to the shoulder and the hips separating. Notice my hips are gonna stay forward here at six o'clock and my shoulders right now are trying to turn over here to nine o'clock without my hips moving. And then in the discus, so if I was in the shot, I'd be separated. In the discus, we have two types of separation. Shoulders, hips, arm, shoulder. So you're gonna notice how my arm kind of disappears. And stretch reflex is when I separate and you see my body kind of sling back. So basically what that means is it's the longest point of when a muscle stretches and it reflexively contracts. And that's a very fast motion. The radius refers to the length of the implement or especially in the discus, how far is your arm, right? The big radius, you gotta have a big radius, you want the arm as far away from possible. So the distance from my hand to my thigh is shorter. The distance from my hand to my thigh is longer. The longer the radius, the further you throw, so that's gonna be important. Now, the radius ties into what we refer to as the orbit, and the orbit is where the path of the discus is moving. You see how it's kind of moving across. So this is what we would refer to the high point. As we would come around the throw, the discus would kind of come down, and then as we turn, it hits this is the high point of the throw but notice the orbit so we're gonna have high low high and then out around and delivery we have a high point in the discus as I just mentioned and that's the high point here this is really critical so as we hit to the power position we're gonna be able to come around this way okay people talk about this right they want to turn the foot like this and a lot of people turn to teach turn the foot. Now you're going to notice that my hips are still facing a little bit this way and they turn. So when I pivot, my hips do turn, but a lot of times people pivot and kind of hit their hips and notice where my hips kind of stop. Now notice when I push my heel up and I'm going to push the knee and then turn, notice how I've turned my hips a lot more and I have a lot more ground contact. And so when we rotate in the rotational throws, the axis is from the hip to the foot. Okay, and you're gonna notice when I'm here and that's what's gonna make me rotate this way. And then we have another axis in the center and it's gonna be really important to be lined up on the axis so we're gonna be able to come through. Opening is always gonna to refer to as going in towards the direction of the throw. Staying closed is gonna be staying back. And in the throwing chain reaction, we refer to the power position as pillars five and, five and six. We wanna lock down maximum power and we want to then work into delivery so we can hit the big finish. Power position is when you're over the delivery leg, which is another term, and then we're going to be setting up our block leg. So the center of mass is going to be this rectangle from my hips to my shoulders, this rectangle. We can't have the rectangle moving around. So now we're going to talk about the sweep, and the sweep is, is usually going to refer to the right leg which determines into the delivery leg. So at this phase of the throw, pillar one, two, three, the sweep leg comes out wide in a nice rotational path. And then we will transition to the middle, which is gonna be our pillar four. And then as I come in, that sweep leg becomes the delivery leg. Now, the next thing is we talked earlier about sprinting. This is the entry leg, sprint leg, balance arm, okay? 
So entry arm, we refer to it at that space. So the sprint leg balance entry arm is at this phase, which is pillar one, two, three. As we go to four, that sprint leg becomes the block leg and now the arm turns into the block arm. So now the last thing we're gonna talk about is the reverse. I drive my delivery side all the way through the block and I come through my feet switch. So some people call it the switch, we call it the reverse. And then we have what we call as the non-reverse. Those are throw specific terms like I made the example before it's like football what's a sideline what's a yard what's a touchdown what's a goal line these are basic things this is your basic terminology for throwing okay guys so welcome back we want to be able to understand throws sometimes people have different terminology most of that is just kind of core throws terminology it's throws 101 but when we've done camps virtually live we'll get half of the people in attendance raising their hand stating they don't understand some of those basic terms so that's why it's going to be really important so now now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just show you real quick what we're gonna look at here. So we're gonna see our athletes setting up. And again, you're gonna notice Sandra Perkovich. We've got separation. She's got, you know, here's the hips are facing this way. Shoulders are facing that way. Discus is way back. You're gonna notice our, you know, younger throwers here that are learning system. Great separation on the younger athlete here. Here's a high school athlete that was, you know, learning to put everything together. And so we have, where's our high point? Notice Perkovich's discus up here. So we've got the high point there. Again, notice our younger throwers got the high point a little too low. So where's our entry arm? and where's our orbit, right? So now we've got the discus dropping into the low point, low point, low point. We've got, do we have the longest radius where we have that arm back and we've got a long radius here. We're looking at our entry side. So now you're gonna start to see how all that terminology plays into your throw. Seems like a basic video, but it's not. It's really critical so that way you can continue to move forward. Remember, one of the big keys to being able to throw farther faster is to be able to understand these basic things. Therefore, it's easier to start getting into the complex stuff that we're going to actually make a lot easier. The throw really is simple. There's a lot of complexity to it, and I know that sounds like a contradiction, but the point is you want to simplify the complexity, and that's what we're trying to do. So once we're clear on those basic terms, we're going to be able to really dive in. So in our next video, what we're going to focus on, like I said, is setting up the chain reaction and setting up maximum power. We're going to look at pillars one and two. We're going to look at beginners, top U.S. ranked throwers and we're going to look at the best throwers in the world and we're going to kind of look at how everybody is approaching that pillar one two and you'll see the difference that what takes a throw from a beginner at two seconds to what takes it to a second and a half by the best throwers in the world and that's what we're going to cover in the next video so if you guys would like more information in the meantime be sure to check the link in the description on the throwing chain reaction system we got tons of information in there for those of you that really want to dive in so do that now don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you on the next video. We're going to be talking about pillar five and pillar six. So what, what does that mean to you? How do we create a ton of power and how do we nail that finish in our discus? And that's what we're going to be talking about here. And you didn't catch the last video, definitely check that out. We covered some terminology and things that we'll be using in today. And if it is your first time here, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. So again, one of the things we talk about in the throwing chain reaction is we want to look at how we set up the throw and how that influences throw. It happens super fast one and a half to two seconds most of these athletes are closer to that two second range and we have one advanced high school thrower in this clip but now we're gonna look at things in terms of the six pillars we just looked at one pillar two pillar three right now you can see the positions pillar four pillar five and what we're gonna do is then finish up big and six so the whole point of the six pillars is as you can see it's visual now you see how I have this locked right here this is pillar five you're gonna notice that each of these athletes are in different mechanical positions and what we're gonna do is again you can learn a ton by looking at the best throwers in the world so if we're looking at like uh, Sandra Perkovich or Yami Perez the current world champion from Cuba uh, Daniel Stahl uh, Frederick Dakers you know a number of these guys the thing that you're gonna notice is that they're doing so many things right they're throwing at a very high level big strong very athletic years and years of work to get to the point where they're at and now when you look at the developing thrower you see the challenges that you're gonna face as a thrower or as a coach if you're a thrower you're gonna be able to relate to one of these images you may see your future self you may see your current self and if you're a coach you might be in a situation where you have all of these most of these athletes I've worked with all of these athletes and the ones that I'm not working with they're using the throwing chain reaction system it really helps to keep things organized keep everybody 
on the same language and looking at the throw for the similar things. And that's what's one of the main things. So again, what we showed you was the six pillars. Again, looking at each thrower here, you're gonna notice that's different. So this is the beginning of pillar five. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our throwers as they come out of pillar three into pillar four, and now I'm gonna move you from that transition. So right here, we start moving, and now we're gonna start our pillar five, and you're gonna see big differences. So we talked about radius, we talked about high point in the last video, and we talked about axis of rotation, how do we pivot in the, on the delivery leg into the throw. And so here's a perfect example. This athlete, too far, too active with the upper body, this athlete, again, younger, too, too active with the upper body. If I run it back a click and you look here, you're going to see how they shorten the arm, the hips are a little back, the discus is a little low. Um, this athlete up here, uh, you're going to notice again when we get to that pillar five, brand new. This was the first week. This athlete had only been throwing a week, so this is pretty good position. Nice level shoulders. We would work on kind of maybe making that arm a little longer, but some a lot of good stuff going on here. Here's a 10-year-old athlete that's super talented, hits fantastic positions, and we go in the next video when we talk about pillar three, four, and we go from the whole thing from one all the way through the whole pillar six, you're going to see that this athlete is arguably maybe has some of the best technique here, and she's only 10. Here's another athlete. You're going to see shoulders a little high, discus is dropping down. She comes out of a good high point, but her body kind of tilts like this. Um, she's new to the system. We're addressing strength issues, and these are all things that are going to play into your technical development. And then we have this athlete here, very talented, um, has thrown quite far as a 16 year old you're going to notice the difference that this is on par with what you're seeing with more elite throwers you're going to notice that the hip position um, the knee ahead we've got the lower body moving ahead this really nice stretch hips underneath going to create fast rotation and so as we come into our pillar six the thing that we're going to be looking at right this is our pillar five. So again, what do we want? Hip under the shoulder, mechanical positions. We want to see that knee pushing in front of the toe. Good, good movement here. Not as good. It's a little more up here because the upper body being so active early is pulling the athlete out of position. You can see how this athlete's shoulders are behind. And again, this is where we're going to use this athlete and this athlete are the best technically. And you're going to notice when we take it back just a click again, and you see right here how the shoulders are level, level, you see that? And you see how these are open and tilted, these are tilted and these are level. So the key things that we're really looking for when we get, then we call it pillar five and you start that power position, we want those hips underneath the shoulders and we want those shoulders level. That's gonna create a whole bunch of good things. You're gonna be able to rotate faster into your finish. This is where we're getting down. And we're also talking about once we get to that pillar five position and everybody locks it in, we wanna see that block foot on the ground this one you can see is a little up. We got both feet kind of in this direction and we wanna see that block foot down a little bit more. You can see here, this is good. This foot's floating in the air and this foot's getting popped on the ground really nice so they're gonna gauge the block. So mechanically, again, this is how we're trying to set up maximum power and lock it down. We always talk about that. We wanna see those double loaded legs so we're gonna rotate faster and move into the direction of the throw. So when you wanna create more power into your finish, you got to be down on the ground. You want that hip under the shoulder, shoulders level. And again, you're going to notice that the chest is slightly, you got this very, very mild angle here. Okay, so as you come around, you have to move this way. If your shoulders are back, you'll see this athlete. And again, that's because the athlete's too active with the upper body. And so the athlete's pulling back and this athlete's here. Now, what's gonna be interesting as we go into pillar six, what we're gonna be looking now is blocking this side, blocking the leg, keeping the foot on the ground, okay? We wanna see the long path of the shoulder as it comes out of five into six. You can see this athlete, you can't really see the arm. This athlete, you can see they're already pulling open. This athlete, the elbow's coming up. This athlete, the elbow's up way too high, so that's keeping this. So she's going like this, and that's gonna create a shift. What are we looking at when we go through mechanically 
for pillar six. Why was I explaining that? Because if the shoulders stay level and long and around, you're gonna be able to engage that block. This is what I think the new athlete does very well. This athlete has been a glide shot putter and is pretty new to the discus as well, but you see how she's pulling over and she had come to this practice and hadn't thrown in a long time. Again, this athlete blocks, but it was so early that when she stopped here, it becomes a slap. This athlete, again, you can see the young athletes pulling down a little bit, but stops that block side. And what, what I'm trying to point out here from a mechanical standpoint, there's a lot of information. Pull the arm in. I've seen coaches who teach that. I don't disagree with it, but there's a real fine line between pulling in and pulling back behind you, you see that difference. And you're gonna notice that the more advanced throwers, you're gonna notice this on the world level, that when they hit, they stop the block and everything comes around. So you're gonna see how this athlete is just crushing the hips through, great block leg. This athlete is working on that, but the shoulder and now the elbow are behind the back, elbows behind the back, elbows slightly behind the back. And now look at, this is your more, more advanced athlete. This is a multi-time <clears throat> national champion. And again, an athlete that I've worked with since the age of 11, she's 17 now. And you can see the, the positions. Now, when you see, I'm gonna show you this as, as we finish. These are the positions, so look at the lines. You can see, again, you wanna see how this athlete, the spine line's a little off. This one's relatively straight, but pulling backwards right and you can see again this one pulling backwards pretty decent spine line a little bit of a tilt here but everything stopped and still a nice stretch on the discus but you can see our more advanced athlete is really extending the radius and the spine line is a little bit this way which is what you're going to see with more elite throwers and so as you come through watch what happens as once the discus leaves the hand we're going to see the byproduct of the good mechanical position so as the discus goes and we take everything away you can see how this athlete is pulling around this athlete's pulled around as we continue to go up on the top athlete, arm is still stopped, arm is still stopped, arm is pulling around. Look at the advanced athlete. Hits, comes through, look at the follow through. See how the arm stayed with the side of the body? So that's gonna be really important to understand that block. It, it comes and everything moves out and around. So when we take it back one more step and we look at our more advanced athlete, we're gonna see that. Watch how the arm stays long. When she comes out, again, look at that level, that shoulder comes up a little. If she maintained it all the way around, it'd be even that much better. But now you can see as she comes through and hits, and again, always after the release, as we come through the reverse, she's coming all the way through, and you can see how, again, recovery, on balance, block arm, still staying with the side of the body. Now, that's looking at it, and this is what I said briefly at the beginning, there's many things you can look at, and today we were gonna focus on your core positions and those mechanics and understanding those kind of core things. Remember, strength, rhythm, all these things play a factor into what you're trying to do when you're working on your throw, and that's the whole point of our six pillar throwing system. We wanna be able to show you and look what's more optimal in the position. Again, we wanna throw optimally, right? Everybody's gonna have their best way to throw. So not everybody's gonna throw the same way, but we show you how the six pillars, what are we trying to do is isolate and show you what are the core mechanics that we're trying to achieve and then as you get better and better your own style will evolve so remember pillar five is we're locking down power and pillar six is we're really finishing big and that's that monster finish that everybody wants last thing when we look at the mechanics when we look on pillar six again look at that knee going in front look at that knee going in front watch everything coming around see this athlete is struggling to get that knee and so she's not really able to get those hips around and so she's pulling the upper body and that's why she pulls down and almost pulls off balance this athlete is doing something similar this athlete is new and this was a personal best and again had only been throwing a week so that was a really good thing had been trained on the most recent version of the throwing chain reaction system and had been doing a really great job and this athlete's coach uses the throwing chain reaction system from day one that's what this athlete's learned she's only 10 and she has phenomenal technique as we go through the next videos coming up right i'm going to cover the transition from i'm going to talk about how we get speed into the middle and how 
we create that big rewrap and high point so that we're creating all this tension that's gonna lead into our pillar five, six. So that's what's coming up on the next video. If you guys have questions, I'd like to hear what stood out most in this video, comment below. If there's anything else or any questions you have about this video, be sure to comment below. Remember, if you are interested in diving in more, we have nine different drills for pillar five. We have nine different drills for pillar six. Part of our pillar five drills is we, what we have is pillar connection. It's that connection of what that movement of five to six. So we have five drills in there for that. If you'd like to learn more about the throwing chain reaction system, visit our website, click the link in the description. And if you missed anything, check out the last video and we'll see you on the next video. How do we apply speed? And then we're gonna talk about that, what we call is twist and wrap, the axis transition. When you're going to the middle, you're switching from your sprint leg to your delivery leg, and you're gonna get that high point, create all that tension that's gonna really lead you into that big pillar five, six, like we talked about in the last video. For these videos, what we really wanna make clear are just looking at and understanding positions. And again, in our final video, we'll talk about the whole thing, putting together all the throws, looking at how we set up our chain reaction, how our six pillars are affected by the start. Today, we're gonna to talk again about applying speed. So pillar three and four is our transition and we're gonna create a lot of tension and rewrap. Let's take a peek. Now, we looked at our, our six throwers from, from the last video and we're gonna to continue to look at them again. And so you're gonna notice when we go through, we get to this point. So right here, this is our pillar three and then we're gonna go pillar four. And pillar four is technically what we refer to as that point where both feet are off the ground. So what we're, we're, we're looking in is the drop in and apply speed. So we're gonna be able to drop and we're gonna aggressively attack the middle. That's what we wanna do. And so we look at these throwers again and we kinda of look at slow-mo and the thing that we'll constantly talk about, why we have the throwing chain reaction system. If you'd like to know more about the throwing chain reaction system, hit the link below. We're gonna to look today specifically, and we're gonna look at dropping in and applying speed, attacking the middle, and then creating that transition. So that's when we're gonna create all the separation, hit the high point so that we're maximizing the radius and the stretch reflex. So let's take a look. So as we look here, now when we come around, this is why you're gonna see your pillar one and two are gonna be so critical, and that if you get those things wrong, it's gonna create a lot of problems. And so now though, so here's what you're gonna see. So when we look at our pillar three position, so now we do all this, let's take a, take a snapshot and now let's just throw up Sandra Perkovich and you're gonna see that. Or let's throw up Frederick Dakers or Daniel Stahl's 70 meters this year. You're gonna see that these guys all have that big wide sweep. And now let's look at our positions. Let's look at our multi-time junior Olympic champion. Look where the, the, the attack she's really good. She's got the nice sweep leg, sprint arm counter. We got that nice counter counterbalance system and here you have the younger athlete really great position now here's the thing mechanics wise what we want to look at we want to see kind of more level hips level shoulders watch the 10 year old level hips level shoulders arguably she has probably the best pillar three crystals pretty close here now here's again our new athlete pretty good you can see that the hips and the shoulders aren't bad here's one of our good athletes nice level shoulders and actually pretty good hips the sweep leg is moving in right so we're starting to see that speed so we go this way and now we'll see this athlete a little not bad a little open we're working on some different things here but watch when we transition to four so this is where you guys are going to see um, the core things that we're looking at from a mechanical standpoint like we just said we want to see a wide sweep leg we want to see a counterbalance system you're starting to see how this athlete is pulling the arm around a little bit too much this athlete has got her arm and her shoulders and her hips are kind of almost in the same direction. Here you're gonna notice the athlete's got the upper body back and here you're gonna see that this lower body's more ahead. And this right here is where you're gonna see the transition and this all this sets up. So now you're gonna see how this athlete comes here and we see that pillar four position, okay? Mechanically, again, what are we looking at? We wanna land on the ball of the foot we wanna see the chest over the knee and we wanna see a nice bend in the knee. And right now, see how this athlete's land a little straight. This athlete's close, again, the new athlete with one week into her full throw, doing a really nice job. Foot's a little low, so we don't want that heel to come down. But look at the position here as we get into the more advanced 
technical positions. You've got the right angle on the back, the left leg is moving with the hips, right? And you're starting to see this discus in a nice high point and a nice counterbalance here, and you see that real nice bend and you see the athlete on the ball of the foot. Now look at this athlete, the problem is the hips are going out, the hips aren't underneath the athlete. So even though there's a good bend and what appears to be a good rewrap, the discus is kind of turns over, then hits the high point. But what's happening with this athlete is because we don't have those hips more under us on the transition with the chest sitting on top of the thigh knee, see she's actually a little more bent over. She This position is actually closer to this position and this position you can see we can't see the discus the arms already open and the discus is down and now we have crystal right and you're gonna see when we showed on the last video pillar five six watch how these things lead into the nice pillar five position so look at crystal at this point look at our young athlete and again now you can see where the chest wasn't in the right position so the hips aren't going to be quite right now the shoulders are actually behind and when i show you the video on pillar one and two you're going to see that where the athlete started is one of the is the reason this this occurred your throw is a chain reaction that's the whole idea behind the throwing chain reaction our six pillars identify where in the chain things are moving out of position but again when we're looking at these two pillars the throws already in motion pillar three so taking a look one more time, when these athletes come out of their pillar two and they drop into the pillar three position, what are we gonna look at specifically? We really want the foot facing in the direction. The reason we had this cone here for this athlete is this athlete was over rotating. And so we gave a directional point. You're gonna notice that Crystal's foot here, you're gonna see is really pointed kind of in that direction, right? So you see the foot's there. The, her lower body's moving around this axis, so you've got, again, the nice sweep, long counterbalance left. Here, the athlete's sweep isn't quite right, a little over rotation. That's what we're looking for. Where's this foot? A little under rotated here, really nice here, over rotated here, and over rotated here. Okay, so the idea on our pillar three is we're dropping in, pushing everything into the middle, so that's why we drop in, we make a clear distinction. We're not teaching dropping down, we're teaching dropping in and applying speed. So we're gonna sprint into the middle really aggressively, and that's what you're gonna see again over here. So as that sweep leg goes wide, that allows you to push. The wide sweep is really imperative because it's gonna turn the system as you push. If you have a cutting in or a pendulum sweeping leg, you're going to eat up too much circle and it's gonna make you too linear. So you're gonna push and you're gonna go way across the ring instead of pushing and having the right leg come around and rip you into the middle. So the sweep leg, that's the object. It's gonna go on that long path and the entry side is pushing and creating that linear path. The upper arm is really key to that. And again, so when we look at pillar four, the rewrap has to be long and counter. And you're gonna see, again, when we look at the counter position, we wanna see how you're gonna notice that with Crystal, you're gonna notice that her lower body's moving and the upper body's, you're seeing this motion, which is what you want. You're creating that whip so you can unwind and whip into the throw. So watch as we come through out of our pillar four, right? Where are we rewrapping? This athlete is rewrapping too early. This is body arm is too close to the body. This arm is not rewrapping, it's opening up. This athlete's doing a pretty good job on the rewrap and so is this athlete. So you're gonna see the differences on the better technical throws. Again, we're close, but that what's preventing this athlete is if the hips were under her, that would change, right? The, the position of the rewrap. So that rewrap would go from not working quite right to getting the hips under, that would straighten everything out. So these are gonna be some of those core mechanical things that you wanna look at and understand. The alignment of the hip pulling back underneath and having that stacked up upper body, that's gonna be the key. So you see this nice long position, you see the left moving with the right side, that's what you're gonna do. And here you're gonna see a little bit of trailing and you can see that whereas these guys are opening better and you can notice Crystal has a real nice low left leg so she's gonna be able to put that down on the ground and really come around into the delivery. So again, that's kind of the core point of today's positions. Remember pillar three, dropping in and applying speed. That's where you do it. We're gonna be aggressive and then axis transition. We're gonna twist 
wrap the upper body, and that's kind of the basis. Again, we have tons of drills inside the system. If you'd like to know more about the throwing chain reaction system and dive in, click the link below. Next video, we will put it all together. We will talk about pillar one, two, look at those core mechanics and see again how those two pillars are gonna affect everything we've just talked about in these, this video and the last video, the wind. That is a huge part of setting up the throwing chain reaction. So you wanna get that set in your throw and pillar two, what we refer to as setting up maximum power and setting up most power to start your throw so you can apply speed, transition, lock down power, and smash the crap out of the finish, i.e. finish big. Be sure to catch up on the previous videos. This is part four of a four-part series on how to throw the discus. If it is your first time as well, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications to follow us. So we're looking at core mechanical positions. We're not getting into all the specifics of how your strength levels are going to influence that, your special strength, your specific strength, how that affects your ability to learn and hit positions. Your knowledge base is really key. So what we're trying to do here with this video is really set you up. With these series, we want you to understand, I need to be able to focus on these things. These are the positions that I'm trying to achieve, and that's gonna automatically get you off on the right start. So let's take a look at our, at our six throwers that we've been kind of breaking down and looking at what are those mechanical positions. Looking at our new throwers, looking at different mistakes. If you're a thrower, you may relate to one of these throwers. You may see yourself as one of these throwers in the future and you might be one of these throwers now and you might be making these same mistakes. That's why it's important that we're looking at it and we're kind of talking about what should be corrected and what's the right position versus some of the things you're seeing. So and if you're a coach then you know you're going to be looking at where you what do you do when you have an advanced athlete and you have a beginner athlete. Well you're going to be focusing on the core same positions. But there's going to be different tricks to get each athlete to do all of those things and why we use this example is because it's really indicative of what you see with throwing. Nobody moves the exact same Everybody is essentially trying to hit the same positions, but there's going to be differences and nuances to the individual. Today, we're going to look at the windup. And one of the things we want to do is this is where we're really setting up the throw. We talked about setting up the radius, the orbit, the high point, the entry axis, creating separation and stretch reflex. Now, one of the things we do inside the throwing chain reaction, we believe in consistency. We want to teach you movement patterns, rhythm, so that it becomes repeatable, right? That's the thing when you look at Robert Hart. Harding in 2009 and you look at Robert Harding in 2013, it's the same throw. These, the, what makes the best throwers in the world is their ability to repeat highly technical complex positions over and over and over again over a long period of years and that's what makes your best throwers in the world. Right now, what a lot of young throwers is they're all over the place, right? They're doing with this throw, this throw, this throw. I always talk about the bullseye. We want to take a bullseye. We don't want darts all over the place. We want to get our darts centered in and we want all of our darts getting as close to the middle, and that's kind of what we're looking at technically. So we break down this, the, the setup into four parts. What's the outcome? What are we looking at? We wanna create length, and one of the things that we're trying to do is create that long position. So you're gonna see this athlete kind of moving both arms together. You're gonna to notice this athlete trying to create that length, and you're gonna see not bad, right? So it's starting out pretty well, and we wanna look, are we all creating length? So we look at Crystal, you're gonna see she's nice and long. You're gonna look at Harley, again, pretty good length. She kind of cups the discus and holding the discus, this is where you're really gonna see some issues. If you've got kids that have issues or you're a thrower, you don't feel comfortable holding discus, that is absolutely one of the things that you have to get out of the way first and foremost. And you wanna spend some time every day working on that until that discus just feels like it's a part of you and it's easy to move it. So you're gonna notice again, as we kind of look at our length, so look at our young thrower here, really great an advanced technique for a kid this age. Super long. So you're noticing how every athlete is setting up length and we're going to also set up what we talk about is the orbit. We want that discus, truly we want that discus up here probably at the shoulder height and so you're going to see this athlete's right out from the shoulder. We can get this athlete, it's not bad. This camera angle, it's a little, it needs to be up a little bit more but this athlete you're going to notice the discus isn't too low but notice how back the shoulder is. So what we're going to see here is an athlete Athlete that's winding themselves off balance and so you're gonna notice when we set it up look at our advanced technicians look at the look at the length how it stays here a lot of tension we want to keep the hips 
centered up. So we wanna keep the hips more here. Um, notice again, where we're looking at how the hips stay kind of centered here. Notice this athlete's hips kind of shift. This athlete stay level. This athlete's athletes are staying pretty level. And this athlete over here, they're turning. You see how they're turning? So everything's turned. So when you look at the back point of the wind, you wanna see this length. So here are the shoulders you can see are kind of here when they need to be a little bit more this way. So pretty solid here. The hip movement here is the issue. So why this is important. So when we're looking at these mechanical positions, we want level, centered up hips, and if they turn too much, if their hips are turning and the shoulders are turning, then you're going to be overwinding and you're not creating the right tension. You're creating false separation. You're not gonna create stretch reflex and stretch reflex ultimately is much faster to be able to move the muscles in your body than consciously trying to throw the discus. You wanna whip the discus, right? And it's, we always talk about the analogy of the bow and arrow. We pull that back, let the arrow go. We don't try to, push the arrow and let go of the handle. And when we set up pillar one, we got the orbit. We wanna make sure that the radius is long. So when that discus is up higher and further away, we've maximized the radius. When we have the orbit in the right spot, we're gonna move through the throw and we're gonna come through that pillar five, six position on better balance. You're gonna notice that as we come out of our pillar one, we're gonna be shifting into our pillar two. Again, this thrower, new thrower, is doing a very nice job on technical positions. As we come around here, look at the length. So one of the things that we do is why do we wanna be long? Because we wanna be able to create that tension and move the lower body ahead. So this athlete here was doing this. So this athlete's actually working on a different position start. This is a drill, so we're trying to teach to get the left foot moving first. You can see that this athlete kinda of holds here, brings the knee in, a little bit of a more controlled start. That's something we advocate when we're teaching our newer throwers because it's easier to stay on balance and move around the throw. And you're gonna notice this thrower again, when we move those hips, the way that foot and that shoulder, she's actually like sitting back. Now when we get there, we get the right tension and we wanna sling into what we refer to as our pillar two. So when we look at this group over here, you're gonna notice crystal moves a little faster. So right here's your pillar two. So let's play it again. We'll watch these throwers. Again, we look at them in slow-mo. You can start to point out certain things and kind of notice where they're moving. Now when we look at terms, so here's our pillar one, and then here's our pillar two. So notice the difference. Now, what are we looking for again mechanically? We're gonna try to keep that discus relatively high. We wanna keep this hip underneath the shoulder and this knee doesn't go in front of the toe. Really, we advocate it's the motion of if it's moving. If it's too far in front of the knee too early, it makes it harder to rotate. And so you're gonna to wanna to find that spot. So if the hip isn't underneath the shoulder, the hips are going to fall back into the throw. So you're gonna see this athlete's hips are kind of turning back into the throw and it makes it very difficult to get around. We always talk about we want to have an imaginary line that we're moving around. Now you're going to notice this athlete's hips are moving back. You're seeing them kind of move here and so when that athlete moves that's going to cause the over rotation into our pillar three. So setting up pillar two, having the hips in the center and moving around on a more level is gonna make a huge difference. So again, notice our 10 year old versus our 17 year old versus our other 17 year old, right? Watch as they move into the throw, you're gonna see Crystal does a heck of a job of moving her body around. You see that? So everything's moving around. This is Chelsea. And again, look at the difference. She's moving over here. And this athlete is going to be over rotating a touch too much, right? The hips are, are sitting back and that's gonna prevent the big speed, the sprint into the middle. So if we don't get our pillar one and two correct, we don't get the right drop in into the throw. Again, what we're talking about are core mechanical positions. We wanna understand when we set up the throw, we have to have the arm height. We wanna create separation. We don't wanna have a lot of movement. We don't want a low point. Right, so when we set that, because when we move around the axis, think about it logically, if I have everything higher, the hips are up, everything moves, it's easier to move around the axis. Again, the new thrower doing a great job. This thrower is trying to focus on the right things, but the hips are moving back. And again, same thing, hips are moving back. This thrower is really moving out long and around and into the throat. You're gonna see a really nice long drop. And again, this is where you see how we put together 
the positions into our pillar three. So one of the things people confuse about the, the system or you hear different things or what sure is or it's something you try to teach every, what, we're, what we understand is, is that the throw is based on physics and biomechanics. Everybody essentially is at the world level is doing the same thing. Everybody's essentially trying to do more or less the same thing. You are going to have your own individual style. What we point out here is are we doing and hitting our core mechanical position? Is the axis moving? Do we have the right alignment? Do we have our hips in the right position or foot turning? the right amount, that kind of stuff. And are we moving through the right windows is one of the other concepts we teach. Each one of these throwers looking at their pillar one, you can see these differences. So you're gonna notice that the kids that are finding it easier to move, look at the position, look with the shoulders turned, look at the shoulders turned, look at the shoulders turned, a little less turned, pretty decent, kind of forced overturn. So now this is a way for you again to look at, are you doing any of these things? This is how we teach, so we get people to understand. These are the positions you're trying to hit. Do you see how you're not in those positions? So that's your pillar one. That sets up your chain reaction. Believe it or not, this is super critical stuff. This is how we're able to get big PRs. This is how we often have people who come in and train or PR in 90 minute training session, you know, or PR over the course of a weekend. How we set up the chain reaction is going to influence pillar two. Pillar two is about setting up maximum power. If we don't shift and move out and around the axis, right? So you can see here, hip underneath the shoulder, hip not under the shoulder, hip under the shoulder, under the shoulder, under the shoulder, not under the shoulder, is that's going to change how all the movement goes. So that's going to change the dynamic movement of the sweep. That's going to change the speed. That's going to have changed the balance. So this is what's really, really important for you guys to understand. So hopefully I've done that today and you now start to see how pillar one and pillar two. And so now let's look at the whole throw and we'll just look at things in terms of the six pillars. So now you're going to see and we're going to see our athletes moving and we're gonna see how they move long, you're gonna see how it's more deliberate, nice attack, you're gonna see what's shorter, who's dropping the foot, who's not re-wrapping, who's too active with the upper body, and now you're gonna see how these different positions work out. And again, here's what's really key. Look at who's the most in control when the discus leaves, okay? See how the arm came way around, this athlete's falling, this athlete's back, this athlete's pretty much in control, and this athlete's in control as well. Again, might add the 10-year-old phenomenal technique. Okay, so let's look at the rhythm. Now just watch and you're gonna see. Now Crystal, we had taken an easy throw. Um, this girl's name is Zuli. She was in her in an actual her first meet, hit a PR, and now you, again you see that. So the idea here, you see them all move. You're going to notice the rhythm, and you're going to notice who's smooth and who's moving through. And again, notice that pillar four. When we come up, look at the discus hitting the high point. I can't see the discus. Can't see the discus. I can see it a little bit, which is good. I can see it a lot, and I can see it a lot. Um, let's move her back a little bit right here. This is where you would see, I can still see that discus, okay? When you can't see that discus, right, we're getting into trouble. So you can see how they're tilting the upper bodies versus pulling the hips under them. Here you're pulling the hips, pulling the hips. Uh, close. Hips are backing in a little bit. Hips are pulling under. So again, this is what you're looking at in terms of your throw. Hopefully you guys see that. That's what I'm trying to point out. So remember guys, the setting up, your wind up is super critical. We're looking for that length. We're looking for that orbit. We're looking for that radius. We're looking for that entry side. We're going to be setting up maximum power. That's getting the hips over and around, not opening the arm too early, not holding it back, opening it long and in to pull you into that pillar three. And that's going to be the key. And then you're putting your whole throw together. So look at how we structure it. We show you each pillar has is a location in the ring. Each pillar has specific objective. Each pillar has positions that you learn to move and train and then you put all that together and you do that in a rhythmical, connective way so it becomes smooth, fluid, long, snappy, fast, powerful. And you wanna do it fast and thankfully that's something that we've shown, we've proven for years now, we get big jumps fast. If you're interested in big jumps fast, be sure to visit our website. Click the link in the description below. Go back, watch. I'd recommend watching some of the videos, pause it, look at some of the frames, see some of the things we're pointing out, take some notes. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and thanks so much, and we will see you guys on the next video.